Now, I think a lot of people are coming into 2023 with the same question. When will the Fed stop raising rates? Today, I want to share with you guys a couple pieces of information that just recently came out from the FOMC in their meeting minutes. Now, to set the stage, first of all, I think all of you guys understand that right now, things are tight. Money is tough. It's an interesting economy. When you look at some things, currently, personal savings rates are at an all-time low. We are at the same low points that we saw back around the Great Recession. Secondly, credit card utilization has skyrocketed to an all-time high. It's through the roof, and so many people are having to finance their day-to-day -day purchases just to survive because of the recent increases in their utility rates, their bills, their food, their gas, their cars, etc., to maintain their standard of living. And third, 64% of Americans are currently living paycheck to paycheck. People are in need of relief. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about what the Fed just released in their minutes, what they said, what their implied paths are, and some of my predictions on what they're going to do going forward in 2023 and 2024. Now, first of all, I want you to understand that you can find the FOMC meeting minutes online by searching for them. I go on forexfactory.com. I find them there, I download their PDF, and I research from there. But I've done all the heavy lifting for you guys, and I'm going to pinpoint a couple different paragraphs that really stood out to me, that helped me understand exactly what's going on in the meeting minutes and what the FOMC is thinking about things going forward. First of all, let's read you this quote. Participants judge that the FOMC would likely slow pace of rate increases further at the current meeting and respondents to the desk survey of primary dealers and survey of market participants widely expected the committee to implement a quarter percentage point increase in the target range for the federal funds rate. Survey respondents assessed that uncertainty around the likely peak level of policy rate narrowed relative to the compared result from December surveys and on average placed significant probability on a target federal funds rate range close to 5%. A significant share of survey respondents anticipated that the committee would hold the policy rate stable for much of 2023. So there's three things to take from this that you must understand. First, it's that a quarter of a percentage point was the increase. 25 basis points is what that stands for. That was the increase in the February meeting of the federal funds rate. That's done, we know that, we understand that. But what was very interesting is down below. Notice where it says a target federal fund rate close to 5%. This is key insight to understanding where we are going. The reason I say that is the current federal funds rate is at 4.75%. The peak rate condition, according to the FOMC meeting minutes, is set to be about 5%. Guys, that only leaves us with 25 basis points of hikes to go. That is a very narrow margin. That means that presumably by the end of March, we will already be done raising rates. Secondly, another piece was a significant share of survey respondents anticipated that the committee would hold the policy rate stable for much of 2023. Why this is important is that tells us that we are getting very close to our peak funds rate, but then we believe that we will stabilize, not raise, not decrease, for most of 2023, meaning that we will not be seeing more rate increases after they stabilize right around 5%. Now, another section titled Staff Review of the Financial Situation mentioned this. Over the intermeeting period, the market implied Fed funds rate path was little change from 2023, but moderately moved down further out. Now, I'm just gonna stop there. We don't really need too much else from there. Understand this is that the implied path right now is that we are gonna stay sideways for 2023 after we finalize around 5%. But notice where it says, but moderately move down further out. That is telling us by late 23 or even early 24, they are already anticipating having to pivot to go back down, meaning reduce the Fed funds rate, which is a pivot to help induce new spending, which means they are implying they think the economy is slowing down to such an extent that within 12 months, they have to help us get back on our feet. Now, this, this next part that I found was really interesting, and it says the market implied federal funds rate path for 2023 was little changed on net during the intermediate period, but fell moderately beyond mid 2024. The reason this is important is this is now saying that their implied path has not gone off direction. They have held this standard that they believe it will remain sideways for most of 2023. But this is now implying that by mid 2024, they think that they're going to have to reduce rates even faster 
than they originally anticipated. Could that mean for us that 2023 is going to be a okay, a decent year to invest? We're going to hold sideways, but by 2024, pretty much we're all gassed out. There's nothing left in the tank, and they're going to have to pivot even harder than anticipated to help the economy. That's what they're implying here. Now, last but not least is a very big paragraph, and I'm going to start from the first sentence that says, against this backdrop and in consideration of the legs of the lags, excuse me, which with uh, monetary policy affects economic activity and inflation, almost all participants agreed that would be appropriate to raise the target range for the federal funds rate, 25 basis point of the meeting. Many of these participants observed that a further slowing in the pace of rate increases would better allow them to assess the economic progress toward the committee's goals of maximum employment and price stability as they determine the extent of future policy tightening that will be required to attain a stance that is sufficiently restrictive to achieve these goals. Notice this saying all of them, or mostly all of them, believe 25 basis points is what they're going to have to do, but they need to slow down soon to assess the damages. That's what they really mean here. But finally, notice this. A few participants stated that they favored raising the target range for the federal funds rate by 50 basis points on the meeting, or that they could have supported raising the target by that amount. The participants favoring a 50 basis point increase noted that a larger increase would more quickly bring the target range close to the levels and they believe would achieve a sufficiently restrictive stance into the account of their views and risks to achieve price stability. I think this has a lot to do with James Bullard from the Fed, who just recently mentioned that he believes a 50 basis point hike is needed in order to get our inflation under control even more. So with all of that said, what does that mean? There are some key takeaways that I want you to understand. First and foremost is that it looks like we are nearing the peak market condition of 5% in terms of rates. Now, it is a around condition, as they mentioned. That might mean 4.9, that might mean 5.15. The point is, we are getting close to the end of this trek of raising rates. Number two, it is mentioned several times that 2023 will be a stagnant, meaning a sideways rate condition, where it will hold across the board for almost all of the year. Number three, we can now see that late 23, early 24, all the way through mid 24, expectation is already there that rates will start to reduce. So this is the information you need to know to now understand how you're gonna be able to maneuver this. I wanna remind you this, historically speaking, after the Fed pivots is when the stock market actually crashes. It's not before the pivot, it's after the pivot. So my guess and my speculation, this is just my opinion, is that in 2023, while we hold rates sideways, it's probably gonna be a little bit more smooth sailing than most of us originally anticipated. But going into 2024, if we get a pivot, that could cause some volatility, potentially a decent correction, and that might present us another buying opportunity for long-term investing. As always, I appreciate you guys for watching. And as always, I hope that this helps you with your fundamental impacts of the market, your macro and microeconomic view, and helps you out a lot. Click the like button and of course, click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys on the next video.